them if you can. Uh, turn with me in your Bibles right now to Isaiah chapter 16. We're going to talk about the open heavens. I wanted y'all to sing, and I meant to give it to you, but I, I was running around with a lot of things, was open up the heavens. But I noticed that there were several songs that made references to the heavens opening or the spirit coming down, which, you know, we talked last week about portals. And, and I asked you how many of you were uh, cloud watching because there are such phenomenal things happening in the sky. Now, there are signs and messages that are coming across the sides. And that is scriptural. We know that the scripture talks about in Genesis right in the beginning that God gave the sun, the moon, the stars for signs and so as we're living in the day that we're living in we need to be looking uh, to see if we can see some of those I've been amazed at the things that I have seen in the clouds and it, the sun the sunsets even the stars at night are absolutely amazing and um, I'll never forget one time I was headed to Laurel with Bill Jr. It was a couple years ago when he was, he was, we were having to take him uh, emergency, just jump up in the middle of the night and run. And so he had been in the hospital and had uh, a doctor's appointment the next day that I, or the next couple of days. And I had to take him back over to Laurel to his heart doctor. And I was, actually, he's such a hardhead. How many know your sons are hardheads? How many's got hardheaded sons? Okay. Now, how many daddies have hardheaded sons? Go ahead, raise your hands too, and you'll both feel good about that. Your daddy didn't raise his hand. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Stephen was looking back to see if BJ raised his hand. <laughs> but you understand what I'm saying. And so as we were, he was driving. That's the hardheadedness I was talking about. He didn't need to be driving. And there I am sitting with a son, you know, think about this in the natural. I'm sitting with a son who has a heart disease that he could just fall over dead any moment. And uh, so there he is driving and I'm sitting over here in the passenger side. And what do you think I'm doing? <laughs> praying why because he's he, can, he couldn't hardly walk to the car and his stubbornness and his hard-headedness he's still going to be the man and he's going to drive Miss Daisy and Miss Daisy sitting over in the passenger seat just praying and I'm saying God what is going on here what in the world is happening God, here he is. He's been in the hospital three or four times. And so I start giving God like as if he didn't already know. You know, and I start telling him all the things that are going on. And I was getting, I was, I was not out of faith. Understand that. You can be, you can be on a place where you're, where you're, you're, you have a burden. So I had a burden of what was going on. And just out of a clear blue sky, the Lord said, look to the right. And when I looked to the right and looked up in the clouds, I promise you that there was an angel, like a trumpet angel, like you see at Christmas time with them going out, that filled the sky. It was not a little tiny thing. It was humongous. And I had enough wisdom to grab my cell phone and click it out the window and was able to post it as my own personal witness that there is an invisible world that we cannot see and sometimes God will pull back the curtain. Well, what do you think I did when I saw that angel? Bill, Bill, look, 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 you see that angel? And he, he, he's driving, I'll hold the wheel, you know, he's driving and he looks out the window and he can't see that angel that I saw. Had not gone away. Now, I'm not criticizing him or putting him down. I'm just saying that God opened a window of my inner man and let me see into the spirit something that would bring me encouragement and edification. And so, what am I saying to you? Don't be down. Don't get discouraged. Don't give up. Whatever you're going through, God will cause you an angel. Remember, you already have a guardian angel, right? Yes. He will let you see that, and it will bring encouragement to you. So 
Today, I want to speak about, or I want to talk about to us, how do we open up these portals? How do we open up the heavens, which we already have come to the revelation, I'm assuming everybody else in here has, since I've preached it over and over and over for a while, the Lord's Prayer. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth, just like it is in heaven. And we already have the scriptures that validate that there are portals that open to heaven. Well, let me ask you this. If you believe in God, then you have to believe in the supernatural, right? So if you you believe in God, then you also believe there's there's a devil, right? There's an enemy. And he's contrary to God. It's Satan. He's called Satan. He's called by many names. So if God is opening portals to heaven, Satan is a counterfeiter so if God is opening portals to heaven then what kind of portals do you think he's opening all right now I'm giving you something to think about I know this may be uh, feel a little heavy but it's not because we need to get spirit wise see we're worldwide we can look at a person and we can snap them up in the world in a minute and pretty much judge and discern what's going on. But we can't discern a lot of times things that are going on right around us because we are not deserted with our spiritual eyes. So God is wanting to open us up where we actually don't just do church as usual. Don't just go to church and hear the preacher preach the same old messages we've heard over and over with no, you know, it's, it's because we've heard it so much we're conditioned, we're hardened to it, and so it doesn't mean as much to us as it used to, right? Right? And so we go to church with a different expectation, but when we still get the same revelation that we've heard all our life, it doesn't affect us like it was. So today, hopefully, we're going to get some new revelation and we're going to get some understanding in Isaiah today because I want to talk to you about some ways that we can literally open up the heavens. Now, I've probably used some of these scriptures recently before, so don't be upset if you have to read them again. But let's go to Isaiah chapter 64 and verses 1 and 2 because we see God doing something Uh, 64 verses 1 and 2 and he makes an absolute statement about portals being open all right so you may be looking at me like oh she is really going off the deep end yes I have and I hope I keep going off into the deep end amen because I'm just tired of church as usual so let's look at it Three ways, we're going to talk about three ways, and one of them is so phenomenally important. It will literally transition your life today, and we'll give you an opportunity to to, uh, walk that out. Amen? 64, verses 1 and 2. Oh, that you would rend the heavens, that you would come down, that the mountains might shake at your presence, as fire burns brushwood, As fire causes water to boil to make your name known to your adversaries that the nations may tremble at your presence. Last week I talked about how this month in New York City, USA, that there is a group of people who who have constructed the Ark of Baals. That is a Uh, temple to the god Baal which was a god that uh, the pagans worshipped in that day we see similarities of what that god stood for there's a lot of free sex there's a lot of sex before marriage there's a lot of of, uh, just all sorts of things in Baal Uh, child molestation abortion sacrifices thank y'all for helping me that's so awesome to have somebody do that and uh so now we know that in this 2016 that in new york city they are getting ready to uh, uh, ru- construct or they've already constructed actually they're placing it on a site in new york city now this this archway which is like a portal remember of destruction and we've already seen the results of it in our country not only that they're not only doing it in New York City they're also doing it 
in another um, London, which was London, and then they're doing it in a thousand other places across the country. Could be uh, foreign nations, but also more in America as well. So it behooves us this morning. It is important for us, for every man, woman, boy, and girl who uh, loves Jesus, who loves God, and who wants to move forward to learn how to advance the kingdom of God. Because so far, it looks like the kingdom of God has been stepping back out of the way so all of these things could come forth. Because there is a rendering. So here we are. They are praying that God would tear the heavens open. That word render means to tear open. God, would you tear open the heavens and would you come down? Because they're crying out to God in an open heaven. Well, whether you know it or not, during one of the feasts of the Jewish people, there is a certain feast where they believe that they have what they call an open heaven for a certain period of time and that they can ask specific requests and things to God during that time and it's during that time that God will come down and meet with them and uh, fellowship with them. So it was not unusual for the, the prophet here, Isaiah, to ask God to tear the heavens open, to begin to come down. He was saying, God, we need you now. And I'm telling you, there is a cry that should be going out of the hearts of God's people instead of just coming to church. We need to begin to beseech God. That's why honor has to be in the house of the Lord. Because when we come here together, we're not coming here to play games. We're not coming here to feel good. We're coming here with a divine mandate, a purpose of God and that is to bring heaven into this earth now and if they can set Satan up look at our schools the ten commandments are being taken were taken years several years ago here they are taking down all of the symbols and signs that refer to only one God Jesus the son and yet now they're allowing them to put up this atrocity this contempt to our God in the face of every person that lives and breathes in this earth. So see, we're living in days that are so serious and that are so, we should be so mindful of. Do we want you to live up and grow up and have a great time in life? Yes, there's no better joy and fun in, than being in God and being able to explore and enjoy all of the blessings that he's placed in the earth. So we have to then begin to do what God did. So what is the way that we get to an open heaven? It's by consistent preserving. Oh. Okay, help me. Preserving. That's what I'm trying to say. Per perseverance. Perseverance. Don't y'all love me? Go ahead, laugh. Come on, let's laugh. <laughs> Y'all didn't laugh, but you got big smiles on your face. It is okay to laugh. Okay. So we have got to be, we've got to be persevering. We have got to be serious. We have got to recognize the fact that evil is all around us and it's trying to overwhelm us. It's trying to destroy our children. It's trying to destroy our families. It's trying to destroy our marriages. It's trying to destroy everything that is a blessing from God. Satan wants to destroy it in your life. And if you let him, then you're the one that's going to be responsible for allowing him to do that. But if I have got this thing down and I realize that in order to shake heaven... So it will shake earth. In order for heaven to come down to earth, then I have got to cry out to God and I have got to say, God, open the heavens. And here's the request. Remember Jacob at the ladder, he laid down on a, on a rock. And as he did, he saw a vision and he saw a vision of a ladder and angels were going up. But bless God, angels were coming back down. So there is a time, a place that you can literally ask God to open a portal or open a gateway to heaven and God will do it for you if you are consistent and if you press into that. You know what? 
I believe it. You know, woo, I believe it. Hallelujah. I, I, I guess I'm just crazy. I believe this. <laughs> I believe everything it says in here. Some of the things I don't like, but I still believe it. And I believe it happened. Why? Because I've had an open heaven in my days of living. I've had many open heavens, such as some of you have. But some of you don't even have a clue as to what I'm talking about. But, so I'm here today to tell you that maybe you ought to do an experiment with God. Hallelujah. Would that be okay? Who knows what an experiment is, right? What's an experiment? Something you test out. Something you try out. Right? You know, like if you wanted to go, what's that stuff they do when they put you, put that, put you in that harness and drop you over the side of a... Yeah. That is an experiment. <laughs> is it not? Uh, okay, and what has Stephen said? You want to find something else. But that's an experiment. He tried something that he's never done before. And some of us, even some of us who have been in the kingdom long enough, haven't been uh, persevering enough we haven't been pressing in enough we haven't been asking God to open the heaven when we know that's the only way it can come to earth okay because we're in this little ritual rut of we command we demand we cry we plead but why don't we just simply ask God to open it up for us amen so you can see how then when we look into the clouds then when we do things like that we can see that God works so here's your experiment you know this week this week you're going to say okay God I want to have an experience with you with an open heaven and I want you to look at something that's going on in your life right now all right and I want, whether it's a, a, a need, whether it's finances, whether it's relationships, whether it's a job, whatever it is, here's what I want you to do as an experiment, okay? Take this verse right here, chapter 24, uh, 64 of Isaiah, and say to yourself, read it. Say, oh God, that you would tear Open the heavens for me in this situation and cause something to happen as a sign to me so that I will know without question that this is the truth of your word. Oh my, y'all are really in bad shape. Okay, so do you see what I'm doing? I'm not just preaching to you. I am teaching you how to get answers to your prayers. All right? So if I'm not consistent enough, if I'm not pursuing God enough, if there's something going on in my life that's haywire and I'm just talking about the problem instead of the problem solver and instead of the solution, you know, with God, I'm just asking everybody else's opinion, then I'm going to get a zero. Uh, hello, anybody ever been there? I I'm testing, I'm telling you what I've tested out and proven. But when I take Isaiah chapter 64 and I say, oh God, here I am. I am begging you, God. I am asking you, which you don't have to beg God, but I think he might like to hear a little begging from some of us because he hadn't heard from us in a while, you know? So you would just say, oh God, I am beseeching you. I am begging you. I am serious about this. This hinges on you, God as an experiment, and then see what God will do for you this week. Amen? Amen. How many will close their eyes? Everybody in here, close your eyes. Now, how many will do that? Raise your hand. Nobody looking around. Amen. Okay. So you may have raised your hand up in your, in your mind. That's okay, too. All right. So we've got to experience God. This is a new way, and it may not be new to some, but it's a new way of talking about it, okay? So, you know, here's what happened uh, on the mountain. You know, Moses wanted to see the face of God. Do you think there was an open heaven there? <laughs> I believe heaven came down. Hallelujah. Uh, because the smoke, the, the mountain covered with smoke and the presence of God Almighty because Moses said to God, God, I want to see your face. Hello? And when Moses got serious with God, God showed up. And that's what's going to happen to you. Prove him. 
Test him and you will find him faithful. Number two, turn with me to Acts chapter 10. Now you need to write these scriptures down because some of you right now think I'm not doing that. But I guarantee you, you are going to do it before the week is out because you're going to be so desperate you won't have a choice. And you'll say, well, I've tried everything. Maybe I can try this. An experiment. Just call it an experiment. Uh, you know, that's how witchcraft became so prevalent. It's because they experiment in the supernatural. They, they, they meditate and they draw their mind onto one focus. And now in witchcraft, you realize they can astral project I used to do a lot of reading about all this stuff. They can, they can project. They can be in one place and be in your house with you sleeping at night and bring in curses and cause things to happen. I know you, don't, you may not believe that, but you better because the dark side has got more information about the supernatural than God's people because we come in and see it and we want somebody to give us something that makes us feel good, and then we go out, and we're all right. Am I preaching too hard this morning? Okay, hallelujah. Glory. All right, number two, Acts chapter 10. You know the story. This is the story of a man named Cornelius. And um, we're going to read about Peter, but verses 1 through 8 is that God begins to speak to this man named Cornelius. He was a devout man. He feared God, and one day, it says the ninth hour of the day, the Jewish day, he saw clearly, clearly in a vision, <laughs> an angel of God that came in and said to him, Cornelius. Now, how would you feel if you were just, you know, meditating or just being quiet one day, and this vision and this voice speaks to you, and you, you, you shake yourself loose, and, and you're like, Huh? Well, who was that? But it doesn't say he did that. It said that he was in a state of prayer, denoting that he had a consistent time that he prayed. That's what it sounds like to me. And so he said, it says when Cornelius observed him, because see, I think Cornelius was probably doing what I did. He was looking around and saying, who, who, who spoke, <laughs> you know? But it says when he observed him, he was afraid. And he said, what is it, Lord? And he said, your prayers and your alms have what? Come up. Are you listening to this? All right, they've come up for a memorial before God. So here's what you're supposed to do, Cornelius. You're going to send men to the city of Joppa, and you're going to go to a man named whose, whose name was Simon. He's Simon Peter, and you're going to ask him to come. And so verse 9, the next day they went on their journey, and they drew near the city. Peter went up on the housetop to pray. Now, he didn't know anything about Cornelius. It was about the sixth hour. And then he became very hungry, and he wanted to eat. But while they made ready, he fell into a trance. And he saw what? Heaven opened. And an object like a great sheet bound at the four corners descending to him and let down to the earth. In it were all kinds of four-footed animals of the earth, wild beasts, creeping things, and birds of the air. And a voice came to him that says, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. Well, remember, he was in this trance, and he said, Not me, Lord, for I've never eaten anything common or unclean. Remember that Jews had a, a law, a dietary law that they had to uh, abide by. And so in this vision, all these animals were not clean. They were unclean animals. And a voice spoke to him again the second time, and he said to Peter, he said, what God has cleansed, you must not call common. And so that was done three times, and the object was taken up to heaven again. See, we see the heavens opening, and we know that he was praying. So if we will prevail in prayer and prevail in whatever our need is, God will answer it. Now, sometimes we ask foolishly, okay? And sometimes we don't ask the right thing. So we need to make sure that when we're going to God in prayer for our need, that we're allowing God or His Spirit to speak to us in the right way that we need to pray. Peter was hungry for God, wasn't he? 
How many's hungry for God anymore? You can't hardly fill a church up anymore. You can have revival and you can't even get the to come anymore. I'm just telling it like it is. I know I'm not hitting on you. I was there. I did the same thing. I'm just telling you. It's where we are today. There is a general disregard for the things of God to the point that we have become so hardened that we can no longer feel and therefore we really don't have the hope and the faith that we need to to see God move in our behalf. So he, Peter was hungry for God. You've got to be hungry. What does that mean? Well, I'm just going to pray, Holy Spirit, create a hunger right now over this congregation. A hunger that they go to bed, they're miserable until they begin to cry out to you, God. And when they wake up in the morning, Lord, if they don't acknowledge you and they don't honor you in the morning, then Lord, let the Holy Spirit just keep working on them until they just turn to you, God, from hunger. Amen. And then number three, as he was praying, we know that the heaven opened and gave him this vision. How many would like to have a few visions and dreams? You know, that are spiritual spiritual in content that really show you a direction. Do you think he got a direction for that? Yes, because once he received that, then Peter was given instructions by the Spirit that when a knock was fixing to come on his door and a man was going to stay there and he was to go with that man. And when he did, he went to Cornelius' house who Cornelius thought he was saved. I guess he was praying, but it says that his whole household was saved. So see, God gives us detailed, specific instructions now, I need to comment just a minute there because I want to tell you I've experienced this. I've done this as an experience, okay? And as I did it as an experience, uh, experiment, then God began to give me detailed instructions. Just like I said last week, he told me uh, to go out of my house, get on my bicycle, drive down a certain road, uh, get to a certain place, stop, wait for his voice, listen for his voice. And then when he told me to go to the next place and the next place and the next place, and when I got through doing what God did and got seated where God wanted me to sit, then God revealed everything I needed to know. And I, that is a fact, okay? That is a fact, proven and tested. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So we've got to be hungry for God in our pursuit of him, in our diligence. And then Luke 3, 21, all right? Matthew, Mark, Luke, if you have a Bible, if you don't, you can just pull it up on your phone, which is real easy uh, and fast. But I still like the printed word. So chapter 3 verse 21. It says when all the people were baptized. It came to pass that Jesus also was baptized. And while he prayed. What does it say? The heaven was open. Do you think Jesus is a respecter of persons? <laughs> he is not a respecter of person. He doesn't care how rich you are, how poor you are, how many clothes you got on or don't have on. He's the same Jesus that came and died for all. And so if we see it happening with Jesus, what did Jesus say? He said, I do everything my father says for me to do. So if you do that, well, my goodness, here we go. So we see Jesus even at his own baptism and praying, had an open heaven over his behalf. Listen, you say, Pastor Lou, you have preached this and preached this and preached at it and preached at it. Yes, I am, and I'm going to keep doing it because we need, we need to break out of where we are. And see, we are fighting tooth and toenail in the Spirit. There's just a few that's praying that has got the heart of what God, I'm not, I'm not condemning anybody, but you understand, there's a due diligence that must be done when God has given us a mandate. We can't just deal with our own affairs and our own problems. We must keep the mandate of the Lord and what he wants first, diligent in our mind, pressing into it so that then as the Lord's movement and kingdom begins to advance, amen? As it begins to advance, then everything in your family life will line up when you line this up with that. Amen. Now, it don't mean everything will be perfect. 
And it don't mean sometimes that you may not go three or four or five months. But I can remember some prayer requests and some people who were serious about things that pressed into those things. And they began to do the due diligence. What is the due diligence? Being consistent, being faithful, and keeping this line of communication open so that as the angels go up from your prayers and begin to come back down, it causes everybody and everything around you to get into proper alignment and you you are advancing the kingdom at that point. Amen? We are advancing the kingdom here. I know we look like you see empty pews or empty seats, but I'm telling you there's going to be a day this building will be used for something else for kids or youth because God has a purpose in this church. Amen. And I believe that. And I just have to keep pressing and pushing. All right, number two. In Deuteronomy 28. I know. I've got 10 minutes for y'all who watch the clock. So I'm, I'm watching it. I'll do my best. And I'm not pointing to anybody, please. And when I look at you, don't feel like I'm preaching directly to you. Because I am. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm trying to look at all of you. But I may look at one per person. And that may, she may say, oh, she's telling me I'm not doing so-and-so. But that's not it. There's no condemnation here. Please understand, this is instructions from the book, from the Lord. So do not take it personal. That's one issue that's in the earth today that we need to learn how to adjust. Because everybody is offended because they take too many things personally. Deuteronomy 28. I'm not reading it all. I'm just going to read verse 1 and 2. Ready. Oh. Now, it shall come, now it shall come to pass... If you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God to observe carefully all of his commandments which I command you today that the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you because you obey the voice of the Lord. Now, so number two way to open a heaven is to do due diligence in your obedience. Because see, some of us have not been doing our obedience. Some of us have heard God speak to us to pick up a phone and call a certain person. Or to write a check for a certain thing. Or to go to a certain place and just wait for it to manifest whatever he's spoken to you. And we have ignored those and said, oh, that's just me. I want to tell you that when you are born again by the Spirit of God, anything that is good and right, nine times out of ten, is the voice of the Lord. And when you reject the voice of the Lord, then you become hardened to hearing His voice properly. And that's when the enemy can come in and get you to do something that looks good, but the whole motivation behind it is evil. And so you have to be smart enough, and you are, because God made us all that way. And you have to be willing to obey his voice when he speaks to you. When you first get saved, you are so sensitive to God. Everything you hear, you think that it's God's voice. And a lot of it is, but there is some of it that is not. Because when it's not... You will see a lot of chaos and confusion attach itself with it. And God is not the author of confusion in your heart. Amen. So when I think I hear God's voice and I move to obey. And then uh, sometimes we say all hell break, breaks out, right? But who do we blame that on? Who do we blame that on? The devil. It is not always the devil. Sometimes we, we do not hear the voice of God properly, but if we will recognize that as not the voice of, Lord, of the Lord and, and say, oh God, I must have made a, you know, was that a mistake? And, and, and so he puts peace there. When you ask that question, all of a sudden you get peace and you're like, oh, okay, well that was a mistake. He put peace in me. All right. And so then I'm beginning to train myself to hear what God is saying to me. He'll start off like simple things. Like, you know, youth wasn't in church Wednesday night. Give them a call. Pick up the phone and say, hey, we missed you Wednesday night. You're part of our team. And when you're not here, we miss you. That's the voice of the Lord. That's a good thing to do, isn't it, right? So we can discern between good and evil if we have properly trained our voice. Blessings in Deuteronomy, Jesus said... 
if you diligently, that means if you will fully obey. That doesn't mean sometimes I can't obey his voice and sometimes I don't have to obey his voice. Sometimes this will be God and sometimes well it works like that in the beginning but pretty soon you have practiced enough moving on the experiments that you're hearing in your head and you're beginning to 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 fine tune that and you're beginning to see which ones were not necessarily God and which ones were God and so you begin to tune your senses in to hear more diligently now what else happens when we begin to do something fully? When I do something fully, it means what? I am all in, right? When I do something fully, I'm all in. Well, sometimes we, we get out, right? Right? Sometimes we get tired. Sometimes we get battle-worn. Sometimes we just don't want to do it anymore. It's too much work. I'm telling you, remember... Open heaven, this will work for you, I promise you. So if I'm going to fully engage in something, Cindy's over the youth. Cindy can be half-hearted. She can, you know, let somebody else deal with everything and her just carry the title if she wants to. But she doesn't do that. Cindy is fully invested in the youth. And even when only one shows up on Wednesday night, she is still fully invested in the youth. When zero show up on Wednesday night, uh, uh, she is still fully invested in the youth. How do I know that? Because she's still faithful to the youth, even though they're not faithful to her. Amen? Are you hearing? It's just a story, okay? It's, just not, it's an illustration. And so then when they all get there, hallelujah, they've made it to the house. She's got them all in there. And then they start doing things that they, they get there and they decide they just don't want to have a lesson tonight. We just want to talk a little bit and hang out. She's still fully invested in those kids. Can you see the difference? So it's the same way for you. When you become fully invested, husbands to wives, Wives to husbands, children to parents, this is our job of teaching them. Amen? So you got that. Number two, you've got to be obedient. When you are obedient, obedient, I know, it's, it's awful. I, need, I could make millions with my blooper messages, couldn't I? Somebody needs to go to work on that so you can get rich and pay your tithes in the church. Oh, hallelujah. You know what I'm, yeah, Stephen, go. <laughs> Do that on your, in your college days, okay? <laughs> Funny, funny. Aren't you glad we can laugh? But what comes with obedience? Blessings. Blessings. Blessings when you go in. Blessings when you come out. You have the favor of God when you become obedient. When God speaks to me and says, write a check for $1,000. And you say, Lord, I don't have $1,000. He says, I own the cattle on a thousand hill. He said, sow it and I'll return it. Amen. Now, we know there's wisdom. You're not supposed to write checks. You know, if you got a bank account, don't write a check that's going to bounce. That doesn't bring honor to God. That's not what I'm saying. But my, when God says it, it's done. That's my point. If God says it, it's done. Some of you have proven him over and over. You've given your last dime. You've given your last dollar and didn't know how in the world. But you understand obedience and so you've sown into the kingdom of God. So number two, it takes your obedience. And then Deuteronomy 28, 12 shows us that when we, and this is important, the Lord will what? Open to you his good treasure. He will open to you the next two sentences says what? The heavens. Woo! He is not only going to open me his good treasures. He's not only going to uh, open to me the th blessings. He is literally going to open up the heavens for me. And he's going to bless me. He's going to, look what he's going to do. He's going to give you rain in your land in its season. How many know we need the rains? 
We need the sun, but we definitely need the rains in the summer. So he's going to give us the rain. Remember now, he's opened up the heaven. If summertime comes and we're in a drought, what am I going to do? I'm going to go be diligent and I'm going to be obedient to the Lord. And I'm going to take that as a matter of something that God needs to be put in remembrance of. And I'm like, God, it's July and we've not had any rain in two months. Now open the heavens and let the rain come. And God says, okay, I've been waiting on you for two months to ask me you know what's your problem so see what he's going to do he's going to bless the work of your hand do you hear that not only he's going to give you rains for your crops and everything he's going to bless whatever you do on your job how will he do that but I'm just as I'm just a lowly this well he will cause your good work your work to be good if you're diligent in your work and you're faithful and your boss can count on you and all of a sudden you start getting favor and you start rising in the business because God sees something you've done. Don't tell me we've had 22 to 25 employees working in Big Ben Tire at one time and we watched the ones who were diligent to be faithful in their attendance to work and who were not late and then who worked like barnyard dogs because we worked like barnyard dogs and we expected anybody that worked for us to work like we did. Amen? And that's what we require. And the ones that didn't, they went that way. And the ones that did stayed. And as they stayed, when raise time came, Bill, I'd go to Bill and I'd say, Bill, we, we, you know, it's a year. We're supposed to consider raises. And he'd say, yeah, well, let's look at that. And we would look at the employee and we would see something in them. And we would say, yes, let's bless them. And so every year we would give them an increase, a blessing, and then we would elevate them in promotions to be managers, to be salesmen, to be retread plant managers. We did a lot of things as we saw what that person did. So it's important for God to bless you for you not to be lazy and sorry. All right. Okay. Just the way it is. The word says, if you don't work, you don't eat. Amen. And that don't mean living on the government. All right. And I realize there's some people who do need government assist, but there is a whole lot that do not need government assist. And I'm talking about USA Rise. Okay, I'm getting on the bandwagon now. All right, so we've got to be uh, uh, diligently obedient. Now I've got three minutes. Last one. This is the one that will knock your socks off because it's the one that most people don't do. In Acts chapter 10, verses 1 through 6, and you don't have to go there if you don't want to, but in Acts chapter 10, 1 through 6, you can read it that all later, we see... Uh, the same story we had with Cornelius, again, we talked about it earlier. And the point I want to make there is that verse 4. Verse 4, going back to it, says, um, what is it, Lord? And he said to him, your prayers and your alms are your gifts to the poor. Have come up as what? A memorial offering to before God. So Cornelius' prayers and his giving came up to God as a memorial to God. And then we see what God began to do. God blessed him and benefited him by bringing Peter to his household. That was just phenomenal the way that worked. Now flip backwards to Malachi, the last book before we get to Matthew. And in Malachi, you all know this one. Preachers preach it when they want to get more income into the church. They preach on the tithe. Amen? Good thing to preach on because people today don't understand, most people, that they're even supposed to give a portion of their money back into the kingdom of God. So Malachi chapter 3 and verse 6 through 10 says to bring the whole, bring the whole tithe. One translation says bring all the tithes into the storehouse. Where is the storehouse? Right here. Right here. It's where you go to church. It's where you minister to. He didn't say send it off in TV land to 10 buck two where they got millions of dollars coming in. Hello? You know, he didn't, he didn't offer, uh, if you'll send me $1,000, I'll pray for you and you won't smoke anymore. Hello. He didn't say, bring your tithes to the one that says, uh, 
I have this little bottle of holy water. If you'll send me $3,000 or $500, I'll send you a bottle of this free holy water. Hello? How dumb are we? <laughs> that is not free. Duh. <laughs> okay? Anyway, so moving right along. He said, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse. There, there may be what? Where? Food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that you will not have room enough for it. So what does God want to do? God wants to open the portals of heaven if you will do three things. If you will diligently pursue him with your whole heart. If you will obey him in the little things that he tells you to do. And then if you will give gifts and, and bring your tithes to the storehouse. Amen. You know what? Next week we're going to have an offering for $5,000, $10,000. How about that? You know why? Because the people we have in this room right now should be enough money in this room to do everything that we need to do in this church. You say, oh, but I don't have an income. Don't tell me that. There's always a way God brings money to us. Amen? So what do we need? We need open heavens and open skies. We need a direct communication because our lives are in messes most of the time. And if we will align ourselves and obey him and give what he wants us to, we are going to see God open portals all over this county and the nation. Amen? Okay. Did you get something? You better have. You better take notes. I'll ask you next week. Remember your exper experiment for this week is to do what? Who knows? Ask God to show you something about your situation that is uh, not a bad thing, but it could be something that he's revealing to you. Something he may be revealing, he may reveal a root cause of something. But I promise you that if we get in alignment with him, that you can test him this week and he will prove himself faithful to you. Amen? Amen. All minds clear? All right, Brother BJ, will you pray us out this morning? Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord.